Command Central. Yes, it's the War Room with your hosts, Roger Stone and the ever well-dressed Owen Schroyer. Nice gold chain there, Owen, but you'll never be Italian. In any event, uh, we have a great show for you today, packed with news. But at the top, first of all, happy birthday, Elvis Presley. Yes, uh, the king was born on this day. Anybody who is unfamiliar uh, we should know that this is the single best-selling poster at the Richard M. Nixon Presidential Library, a picture of the president and the king in their unlikely meeting in the 1970s. Also on tap, big news out of Las Vegas, where a federal judge has dismissed the case against Cliven Bundy, his family, and his followers after gross misconduct by the federal government. Also coming up, uh, growing evidence that Deborah Wasserman Schultz, the congresswoman from South Florida and former chairman of the Democratic National Committee, actually not only helped Hillary Clinton steal the Democratic nomination from Senator Bernie Sanders, but startling new evidence that she also conspired with the Broward County Board of Elections to steal her own re-nomination to Congress in the Democratic primary against challenger Tim Canova. Also, uh, a special report on uh, Attorney General Jeff Sessions' effort to crack down on state legalized marijuana, and then finally, Oprah versus Michelle Obama, what could be Armageddon for the Democratic Party. In the meantime, Owen, what I hear is deafening silence from Brian Stelter, because our man, Alex Jones, threw down the $1 million challenge to strip to the waist and fight to the death. Still nothing from that fake newser at CNN, Brian Stelter. Well, I can't say I'm surprised. I mean, after all, uh, none of these liberal news hosts ever put their money where their mouth is. They admit the Russian story is a nothing burger behind uh, a secret camera, but then go on air and try to pretend like there's actually something to report there. But you would think, I mean, a good liberal with a million dollars on the line for charity, you know, even even Brian Stelter, what you would think would be willing to take a beating just for a million dollars for charity. But he's obviously selfish, so he, he won't be doing that. Well, and this is a man who wantonly, openly, flagrantly was found wearing sandals with a suit, which to me is an abomination against a good taste. But kudos to Alex Jones for laying down the challenge. We're active on Twitter and Facebook, making sure the Stelter's aware of it. And it's not too late, Brian. You could be a man. You could man up and take uh, Alex Jones on on his stunningly generous offer to put up one million clams for the charity of your choice to climb in the ring with the alt-right freedom uh, spokesman, Alex Jones. It's not too late, Brian. We're we're waiting to hear from you. Yeah, and let's not forget, too, you know, Brian, Alex said that you could even have a tag team partner if you wanted to team up with Michael Wolf. So you could even have a tag team partner if you feel like going one-on-one -on -one versus Alex is too impossible of a task for you, even if it is for a million dollars for charity, if you're just too selfish to do it that way. Well, Roger, uh, I thank you for complimenting me on my attire today. I, I, I didn't get the tie on today because I just came in from a man on the street interview, but hey. Happy birthday to uh, the late, great Elvis Presley. And Roger, you are nothing but a hound dog, but I know you're about to jailhouse rock this hour. No question. We'll be right back. You're in the right place right here at the War Room. Welcome back. Yes, we are the tip of the spear. And here at the War Room, you see the expanded coverage. It's been mapped out by Alex Jones for 2018. Now, 10 hours live a day and growing with your assistance. Now would be a great time for you to take advantage of some of the extraordinary specials we have going on at the InfoWars store. Uh, it won't be all that much longer, so now you can get in on the final days of the special on Silver Bullet. 
the very finest silver colloidal formula on the market today. Uh, also, the entire line of Super Blue Oral products, one of my favorites and the Stone family favorites. There's the non-fluoride toothpaste in two flavors, the mouthwash uh, and all of the uh, incredible Super Blue products. Again, all fluoride free. And now for a short time only, only 50% off. I think Alex Jones was the one who said it. It's a 360 win. You not only get the very best products available today, rigorously tested by Alex Jones and the scientists that work for him, and you help finance the counter revolution. We are the tip of the spear. We don't have big fat cat donors standing in the, in the wings writing huge checks for our expansion. We are completely listener and viewer funded, and that's why we need your support. Also, the making of the president, 2016, how Donald Trump orchestrated a revolution, now at a terrific price, much, much less expensive than if you went to, say, Amazon or Barnes & Noble. So get your copy about the incredible, unprecedented, come from behind victory by Donald Trump in 2016, and the integral role the InfoWars played in that victory. Please folks, go to the InfoWars store now and help us help you. Now, uh, I like your idea, Owen, of uh, you know a tag team match, but instead of uh, uh, Michael Wolf, I think perhaps Brian Stelcher should call in Jake Tapper, AKA Fake Tapper. Uh, today, he already got his derriere beat, I guess it was last night, by Stephen Miller. Stephen Miller, referred to affectionately as the Minister of Information, the last Trump loyalist on the White House staff, and the last one active in the campaign, with the exception, of course, of the great Hope Hicks, the communications director, and my friend Kelly Ann Conway. But this is a video that must be seen. Let's roll it. Understand. The people whose manufacturing jobs have left, who've been besieged by high crime communities, and who've been affected by a policy of uncontrolled immigration, those voices, those experiences, don't get covered on this network. That's so, why, the, I mean, it, it, to prove the point, I was, I was booked to talk about the very issues I'm just describing, and you're not even asking about them, because they're not interesting facts to you. That's not true. I have plenty of questions on immigration. There, there, You've well, attempted to filibuster by talking about your flight. No, I'm not. I'm, no, I want to ask you a question. Because uh, don't, you, no, you, don't be you, condescending. You, Jake, Jake. Stephen, Jake, the president the reason, and the no, White House. The reason why the president I want to talk the about. White, the president Jake, and the White House. The reason why I want to talk about. The president's experiences, what I've seen with him traveling to meet dozens of foreign leaders, with his incredible work. Okay, you're not answering major, the questions. No, I understand. You have 24 hours a day of anti-Trump material. You're, being, you're not going to give three minutes for the American people I to get hear it. the real experience you're, you, of you, Donald Trump. There's one viewer that you care about right now, and you're being obsequious. No, you're being which, a factotum no, in order being, to please him. Okay. No. And I think you know, I've, you know I, I think I've wasted enough of my you viewers' time. I, you know who Thank I you, care Stephen. about? As Republicans, hey, Jake, lawmakers call you know for Attorney General about? Jeff Sessions to resign. In a major reversal, Democrats are now coming to his defense. What changed? We'll ask the top Democrat on the House. Well, there you have it. Jake Tapper, non-journalist, tried to silence Stephen Miller when he tries to talk about the issues that America cares about. CNN is not a news organization. It's a propaganda front for the globalists, formerly known as the Clinton News Network. And their slogan, we make crap up. Oh, and uh, a stunningly good decision by a federal judge in Las Vegas, Nevada, who says that rancher Cliven Bundy uh, and his family and supporters will not be retried uh, based on gross governmental misconduct in their case. This is a landmark decision that restores one's faith in the U.S. Constitution and our justice system. Tomorrow on The War Room, we hope to have members of the Bundy family to comment on this stunning development. Only last year, I traveled to Las Vegas to speak out for the Bundys and call on President Trump to pardon them. I'm convinced the president may have issued that pardon, but now it's unnecessary. Let's roll a piece of that. 
Will the greased skids of federalized corruption set a larger precedent for unchecked property seizure in America, or will long-established rights restricting that corruption seize the day? They cannot argue the First Amendment. They cannot argue the Second Amendment. She strips them of any fair trial. And when in this jurisdiction, thanks to her husband, uh, people indicted for murder are allowed out on pre-trial release. These men have been denied due process guaranteed by the U.S. Constitution. Uh, this is one of the prouder moments in my public career. I was pleased to travel to Las Vegas to uh, argue for justice for the Bundys, and today justice is served. Owen? Well, it's amazing to think, I wonder if you would have had the same outcome had Trump not been elected. Something tells me no, that you would have had a different outcome there. So I know that the Bundys have been through so much, and it must be such a weight off their shoulder uh, uh, feeling that they have today, feeling like they're going to have to not deal with this corrupt, bloated federal government anymore, specifically the Bureau of Land Management and of course, we know what happened when they decided to stand up against the, uh, those people. An innocent man lost his life. Um, but, Roger, I want to go back, and I actually wanted to make a point on the Jake Tapper, Stephen Miller segment. Because Jake Tapper said something in that segment that's actually very revealing and indicative of exactly how they feel. So Stephen Miller is saying, why won't you give me three minutes on your anti-Trump news network, 24 hours a day, to give you good news about Trump. Why won't you just give me three minutes? And what does Jake Tapper say? He says, you're trying to cater to one member of the audience. Jake, this is, Roger, I mean, do they really think that way? Do they really not understand that there are 60 million plus Americans that are fully behind Donald Trump? Do they really not understand that there is a large section of the American public that wants to know what's really going on with Donald Trump? Even those that don't like Donald Trump, they at least want to know what the real news is. But that shows you their hubris. That shows you what they're thinking. They really don't get it. They really don't understand that we exist. They really don't think we're human. They really don't think we're out there. And so he's like, Oh, stop trying to cater to Donald Trump this segment, the only member of the audience that wants to hear the news. No, Jake, everyone wants to hear that news. That's why your ratings suck. Well, uh, you're, you're very uh, shrewd to, to pick up on that. I picked up on it also, Owen. The irony of this course is that Jake is just trying to appeal to one other person, Jeff Zucker, to keep his job, given the fact that CNN is losing money and viewers hand over fist, that it is a failure. So while we grow exponentially here at InfoWars, while our audience gets bigger and stronger and more vibrant, they're shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. That's because they deal in fake news. CNN is, as I said earlier, not a news organization. It's a propaganda front for the far left. And they have no shred of credibility left. That's why our audience grows and theirs shrinks. You're in the right place here at the War Room with my colleague Owen Schroyer. Uh, and coming up soon on our next segment, we discuss how Deborah Wasserman Schultz, the former Democratic National Chairman and Congresswoman from South Florida, may have stolen her own reelection bid, never mind stealing the Democratic nomination on behalf of Hillary Clinton from the hapless Senator Bernie Sanders. Welcome back to the War Room. We do enjoy the King, Elvis Presley, as we salute him on his birthday that would have been today. You know, Roger, as we're listening to Jailhouse Rock, could become a theme of many Democrats very soon, one including Debbie Wasserman Schultz. You know, there's nothing quite like a moment of hubris like Wasserman Schultz had when she was threatening police officers who were trying to get evidence against Wasserman Schultz and what they were doing to rig the DNC. But now you're saying it goes a step further. This is a woman who has a lot of experience rigging elections. Yeah, I want it's really quite extraordinary. We know, of course, uh, from the WikiLeaks publications of internal Democratic National Committee emails that Deborah Wasserman Schultz was deeply involved, colluding with Hillary Clinton, to steal the Democratic nomination from Senator Bernie Sanders. 
Do you know who won the California Democratic primary between Hillary Clinton and Senator Sanders? Either do I. You know why? Because they're still counting and the count will never finish because we know that Senator Sanders won that primary and was cheated out of those delegates. But now comes stunning information from Broward County, Florida, that Democratic congressional challenger Tim Canova, who had filed a lawsuit seeking to examine the ballots in the incredibly close Democratic congressional primary, has also been cheated. With the revelation that the Broward County Board of Elections, under the supervision of Brenda Snipes, with a lawsuit pending, destroyed the paper ballots before they could be recounting. This was exposed to the American people last night on Fox on the revolution with Steve Hilton. Let's take a look. The presidential election, now her own election. Well, let's be clear that it was the Broward County Supervisor of Elections and not Debbie Wasserman Schultz who actually destroyed the ballots. We had our concerns about the accuracy of the vote count um, based on what a number of election integrity groups were saying to us. We thought, let's put in a public records request under Florida's law. Florida has a very good public records law. The first of three public records requests was over a year ago. We were stonewalled for six months, finally filed a suit to enforce our rights. And while the lawsuit was pending, they destroyed the ballots. And that's in violation, apparently, according to Politico's uh, uh, interviews with seven election law experts, in violation of federal law and in defiance of the court itself. So you've got to ask, why would somebody be violating the law to destroy ballots? But what, what made you think there was something dodgy about this in the first place? Why, did, why are you even involved? Well, in you know, the, the public opinion polls said one thing, and the public opinion polls were based on a pretty limited sample size of maybe 400 voters with mm -hmm. landlines and, and, and not cell phones. Our own internal numbers, we were knocking on 10,000 doors a week. It was a lot, much larger sample size and probably more representative, uh, indicated a much different result. So we were always a little bit skeptical of the official result. And we thought, let's just put everyone's concerns to rest by verifying the vote. Mm -hmm. And what we found was very disturbing. Uh, you know, when you cannot even have paper ballots no, that are amazing. secure. destroying it after the request. Is <laughs> which apparently undermines um, the the uh, uh, confidence, you could say, in how accurate the digital scan. You're being very polite are. about it, but it sounds to <laughs> me like, you know, this is this is really bad. What's going to happen next? How does this move forward? Well, we are calling for a federal investigation, and we'll see what will happen. And I'll say it's not limited to my own district. I mean, we saw in the last presidential election voter suppression happening on a massive scale. Just a couple of months ago, the New York City Board of Elections admitted in a consent decree that they had suppressed, or they had purged more mm -hmm. than 200,000 voters from their presidential primary, and they promised not to do it again. And How many? 200,000 voters in New York City alone, and now I'm hearing from folks in Putnam County and Orange County and all over New York State saying it happened there as well. It's really interesting because, I mean, normally that voter suppression argument you hear is, you know, always directed by Democrats. <laughs> So uh, there you have it, an extraordinary interview with Tim Canova, the challenger to Deborah Wasserman Schultz. Uh, let me point out that the uh, Broward County supervisor of the Board of Elections was also a Wasserman Schultz supporter and part of the Broward Democratic machine. Under federal law, paper ballots in a federal election must be preserved for 24 months after the election. So what we have is not only a flagrant violation of federal law, but a flouting of the court. A better question, of course, is why Mr. Canova's public records request was stonewalled for six months. I know the answer. They were trying to decide how to hide or destroy the evidence. Brenda Snipes needs to be prosecuted under both federal and state the law. Do not hold your breath. Owen? Well, this is kind of a common story that we're, we're getting more news, it seems like, almost on a weekly basis here where, I mean, this thing from Florida kind of comes out of nowhere, I think, for a lot of people. But you had here in Texas, I mean, the Texas election commissioner pretty much just breaks the law here brazenly and whenever we tried to ask him questions specifically a viral video of david knight approaching him for a question he literally turns around and runs up the stairs and hides for the rest of the day in his office 
And then the next day when I come back, he has a new security team because what is he doing? A lot like what Roger just reported on and what's happening in Florida, the paper ballot record that by Texas Constitution law, yeah, there's the viral video right there, Keith, Keith Ingram running away from David Knight. By law in Texas, just like by law in Florida, you have to have a paper record. You have to have a paper ballot. But they just completely ignored that law during the presidential election here in Texas, as far as we could tell. It sounds like they did the same thing in Florida when Wasserman Schultz was running. And now we're starting to realize Election fraud is not just about Democrats trying to bring in voter blocks with illegal voters, whether they be non-citizens or refugees or dead people, that they get people to vote twice on the rolls, whatever it is. No, they're actually just blatantly violating basic law of having a paper ballot so that they can probably rig these things with the voting machines and then nobody can ever recount it. So it just becomes public record. To her credit, uh, the Republican challenger to Deborah Wasserman Schultz, Kyla Spaulding, has called for a federal investigation into whether challenger Tim Canova was cheated by the Board of Elections. And the voters of Florida get a rerun. Mr. Canova is challenging Wasserman Schultz again in the Democratic primary. And the winner of that contest will likely face Republican challenger Carla Spaulding. We're going to stay on this story to let the InfoWarrior audience know exactly what's transpiring in the Sunshine State, where clearly the law regarding paper ballots uh, and re-election recounts is not being observed by the Broward County Board of Elections. I'm Roger Stone with your uh, my co-host, Owen Schroyer, and you're in the right place. Yes, it's the War Room. And now's a good time for you to head to the InfoWar store, folks, to help us fund this expanded coverage that you seem to like so very much. Please, folks, help us, help yourself, head to the InfoWar store for the incredible specials on Premier there today. We're back on the War Room with your co-hosts, Roger Stone and Owen Schroyer, we are the tip of the spear. We are the resistance. And we're thankful to our many viewers and listeners for your loyal support at the InfoWars store and in reposting your favorite links to the War Room, not to mention the Alex Jones Show and the Real News with my colleague David Knight. The way to beat those uh, on the tech left who would try to put the toothpaste back in the tube, labeling us as fake news and playing with the algorithms to try to limit our reach, is to take your favorite links to our coverage here at InfoWars and post it in your own social media platforms, be it Twitter, Facebook, Minds, Gab, or whatever. You cannot understand how incredibly valuable that is to us in in terms of spreading the truth and the real news over the fake news. Now, since 2014, every appropriation in the U.S. House of Representatives has had the amendment rider attached to it, which prevented the U.S. Justice Department from using federal funds for a crackdown on state legalized marijuana. 29 states have taken the action of legalizing marijuana for medicinal purposes. In nine cases, the states have gone further to legalize marijuana for so-called recreational purposes. In the last presidential campaign, candidate Donald Trump made it very clear that although he did not support marijuana, he did support the state's right to decide for themselves, and that millions of Americans are counting on that pledge for their access to medicinal marijuana. Medicinal marijuana has been particularly fruitful in the treatment of PTSD for our veterans. Now, however, in violation of the president's solemn pledge, Attorney General Jeff Sessions has uh, not only blocked the attachment of that rider in the future Congresses, but now has repealed the coal memo, which was the policy under which the federal government stood down 
and abrogated this decision to the states. That's why I joined with Judge Andrew Napolitano uh, and uh, HBO's Bill Maher, the Guardian Angels Curtis Sliwa, Congressman Matt Gates, and so many others in forming the United States Cannabis Coalition. We are appealing directly to President Trump to keep his solemn pledge. And we're going to put this television commercial on the air shortly. Let's roll it. In his historic victory in last year's election, Donald Trump courageously pledged to protect the access of millions of Americans to state legalized medical marijuana. For medical purposes, absolutely, it's fine. Now, Attorney General Jeff Sessions has proposed a crackdown on state legalized medical marijuana in violation of the president's pledge. Good people don't smoke marijuana. Join the United States Cannabis Coalition. Urge President Trump to keep his pledge. I think medical should happen, right? Don't we agree? I mean, I think so. Well, and there you have it. You can support this important effort by going to the uscannabiscoalition.com. That's uscannabiscoalition.com to make a generous contribution today. We need your support to get this TV commercial up on the air in the District of Columbia to define the important issues involved. Meanwhile, a new poll out of Buffalo, New York, shows that 67% of voters are less likely to vote for President Trump's reelection given the actions of his attorney general. It's time to reel in Jeff Sessions. No, Senator, it's not good people who smoke marijuana, it's sick people who smoke marijuana, literally millions of them. Owen, back to you. Well, I just don't understand with everything else going on right now, why Jeff Sessions would choose that battle uh, with marijuana, something that he will lose every time as far as public support is concerned. And again, a battle that seems very small as far as the big picture is concerned, when you've got Hillary Clinton's emails, the investigation closing in on Huma Abedin, the Trump Russia dossier that's floating out there, we're trying to get to the bottom of. Why Jeff Sessions uh, continues to stick his nose into a bong, I really don't understand. But the one thing that that I kind of take away from this, you know, we'll see what what happens as far as this this policy is concerned, and we will be raising awareness of it, as you just saw the ad there. But the one thing that I kind of take away from this, Roger, it really shows to me a stark difference between a Trump supporter and a Trump hater or whatever word, a right, a rightist, a leftist, a conservative, liberal, where here we are looking at a policy signed by Obama, looking at an Obama policy and saying, hey, we support that. We're OK with that. We will stick to our actual you know, policies here and not just go based on name, but instead on idea and policy. So here's a policy Obama pushes through and we say, OK, we can support that states rights, marijuana, legalize medicinal marijuana, open up that pathway. Obama did that. OK, we can get behind that. So that shows you that conservatives are open minded to things and they're more based on policy instead of identity and namesake where I go out on the street today to do a man on the street and I tell liberals that Trump's tax plan is Bernie's and they love it. But right before that, when I said Trump's tax plan, they hated Trump's tax plan until they thought it was Bernie's and they loved it. Doesn't this show an ideological difference between a modern day conservative and a modern day liberal where a liberal is so close minded, so hardened by hatred and rage and fake news that they won't even be open minded to something that politically they would support based on policy. But because it has Trump's name on it, they just are, are stonewalling it where we're like, hey, this is Obama legislation opening up the way for states rights for for legalizing medicinal marijuana. That's fine with us. Oh, here's the Trump administration trying to stop that. Well, no, we'll actually side with what Obama tried to do on this. So to me, that's just a distinct ideological difference that you can see right now in modern day conservatives versus liberals. I couldn't agree more, Owen. Let me correct myself. It's uscannabiscoalition.org. If you want to support the effort to urge the president to keep his pledge to protect the access of millions of Americans to medicinal marijuana, please go to uscannabiscoalition.org and make a contribution today. 
there are very few things I can point to that the Obama administration did that I agree with, but this is one of the few. And you have to wonder, with the recent revelations that the Obama administration was trafficking guns to ISIS, trafficking guns to Al Qaeda, that the Obama administration was actually protecting drug trafficking within the United States by ISIS so as not to interrupt uh, the Iranian nuclear deal, one has to wonder why Jeff Sessions isn't focused on those crimes as compared to stopping millions of Americans from getting the medicine they need. Folks, help us out. Go to the US Cannabis Coalition dot org now and make your contribution. Help us get that television spot up on the cable news networks across America to make sure that the president is reminded of his solemn pledge. Yeah, I think it's a no doubter this day and age. I think in general, most people would feel the same way. It's time to treat marijuana beach that she gives where she's virtue signaling to all the members of Hollywood where the if a rape culture exists, it exists in Hollywood. If a assaulting women, sexually assaulting women culture exists, it exists in Hollywood. And then all of these Hollywood scumbags, all the Golden Globes is, is a bunch of Hollywood liberals that that sniff their own farts walking around L.A. patting each other on the back because they all got high off their own farts all year long. That's all the Golden Globes is. But it really I, I, I'm wondering if the general population is as I mean, nauseous, disgusted, uh, perturbed at Oprah Winfrey getting up with that total fake canned virtue signaling speech. But going back to the notion that she might be running, my first response to this, Roger, same thing with Michelle Obama, is they don't have a chance because in a debate with Donald Trump, Oprah Winfrey or Michelle Obama would get totally embarrassed. He would mop the floor with either one of those uh, ladies. But then I remembered something. They would have the entire debate rigged just like they tried to last year. They would they would literally set up every question and answer for whoever it is they run against Donald Trump. Let's say it's Oprah or Michelle Obama. You know that they would totally collude with who's ever hosting the debates and they would give Trump's Trump's opponent, whether it be, let's just say for for sake of example, uh, Michelle Obama or Oprah Winfrey could never even figure their way out of a maze of a debate if it wasn't for rigging the debate. I, I This is my concern, Roger. In a fair debate, Oprah Winfrey and Michelle Obama would look like the dingbats that they are. But you know that they're going to collude with the media. The media is going to give them every question before the debate so that their people who write their speeches can write their answers for them, too. I mean, they're going to even try to rig this next election, I think, even more. Well, the important thing to remember is how completely thoroughly the Obamas control the machinery of the National Democratic Party. Believe me, they are glad to be rid of the Clintons, almost as glad as the rest of us. And I have laid down the marker here and on the John Gibson show today on radio saying that Michelle Obama will be the Democratic nominee for president. I still fervently believe that if there is one candidate with the star power and the money to give her a run for her money, it would be Oprah. Now this is a cat fight I want to see. In the meantime, as we predicted here on Infowars back in March, the Trump is crazy meme is now in full generation. Yes, we predicted it here that once the Russian collusion delusion collapsed, once Robert Mueller and Adam Schiff and Dianne Feinstein and Senator Mark Warner, one of the great phonies of the U.S. Senate, came up completely and totally empty handed with no evidence whatsoever of actual Russian conspiracy uh, or coordination uh, in the election of Donald Trump, they would shift to plan B. Plan B, quite simply, the president's nuts. He's mentally unstable. He's non compass mentis. Really? How have we gotten a record stock market? How have we gotten unemployment to record low levels? 
How has he driven African-American unemployment to the lowest point since we began measuring it? Why do we have a boom in the housing market? Why do we have ISIS on the run? Why do we have a solid conservative on the US Supreme Court? All Trump does is win. So we cannot attack his policies. We cannot attack the results. So what do we do? We call him crazy. And then sadly, Steve Bannon, allegedly an ally of the president, adds to this media narrative by uh, inadvertently or advertently leaking to one of the great weasels in American journalism today, Michael Wolff. Now, Steve Bannon is in retreat saying, oh, he meant when he said that the meeting between Donald Trump Jr. and the Russian lawyer was treasonous, he was referring to Paul Manafort. More bad news for you, Steve. Paul Manafort's gonna be suing you for multi-millions of dollars for that slur. You need to quit while you're ahead. Donald Trump is the same individual that I've known for 40 years. No, his executive governing style is not the same as his predecessors. He's not your cookie cutter, blow dry career politician, reading talking points written by someone else, sticking a wet finger in the wind to find out what to say in order to be popular. No, he's what you call a leader and he's doing it his way and America is making its way back under his leadership. The Democrats in 2018 intend to run on the only thing they have left, impeachment. We will run on jobs and prosperity and mark my words, Republicans can gain in both the House and the Senate by following our president. Roger, when they try to say Trump is crazy, all the evidence actually winds up back on them being crazy. I want to, I want to give you a little juxtaposition here as uh, before you depart with us here today to show you how crazy the Trump detractors actually are. Let's just again juxtapose two narratives that they're going with right now. Trump colluded with Russia to win the election, so he's working with Russia. He's having meetings. He's working with Putin. He's getting hacked servers, he's getting all this stuff because he wants to win, so he's colluding with Russia, so he does all of this effort with Russia to win and steal the election. There's a, at the same time, a totally separate narrative is building that actually was the entire purpose of the book Fire and Fury. Trump doesn't want to be president, he never wanted to win, he didn't want to win when he won, Melania was upset, he was shocked, he couldn't believe it. So you have a state of mind right now with the Trump detractors that he wanted to win so bad, he colluded with Russia. At the same time, he never wanted to win and he still doesn't want to be president. So they literally are living in a reality.